All right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and welcome to Monday. Today, I have got some pretty interesting crypto and Bitcoin stuff to show you as always. Then we've got some data and I'm excited to show you the data for the stock market because it all kind of points to a year end rally. I'm going to point at a couple of things in the charts, although obviously the weekend's TA still stands. So not a great deal has changed in the charts as it is early morning Monday. And if my voice sounds a bit bunged up, you have to excuse me. I've got another cold for some reason, even though I, <laughs> I spent like three weeks with a chest infection only a week or so ago, and now I'm ill again. It's probably my own fault because I refuse to be ill and just sit down and recover. I still go to the gym and drink rum on the weekends and go and sit in the cold and go fishing as well. So it's entirely self-inflicted, but we're going to get through this. Okay, so starting off, Hong Kong is assessing whether or not to allow a spot Bitcoin ETF and other crypto ETFs. So we're likely going to start to see competition, which of course is amazing, between China, Hong Kong and the US. If the US has its proxy asset manager, BlackRock, launching an ETF, then China needs its proxy asset manager to launch one as well. The US and China economic war is great for Bitcoin. The things are heating up and we continue to see them heat up, especially in the charts. Take a look at this, right? Does this and this not look strikingly similar to this moment in time back here? And of course, what happened back here was very good things happened to the price of Bitcoin walking forward becoming increasingly difficult, isn't it, to find a bearish look for Bitcoin. We also have the monthly stochastic, which never gets as high as it currently is, unless something great is about to happen for Bitcoin. So if I draw your eyes to this red dot here, 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 and here, of course, you can see good things happened to the price of Bitcoin in every single case. Is this time going to be different? I highly doubt it. The hash rate for Bitcoin continues to skyrocket. Of course, the underlying Thing that backs Bitcoin is the decentralized network, which of course makes Bitcoin the only secure database on the planet. This current chart hints at 450 quintillion. However, we actually hit a high of 559 exahashes per second. So this is absolutely monstrous for the hash rate. And of course, there is indeed that old adage that price follows hash. We are still in this neighborhood where no one wants to sell their Bitcoin and who can blame them, frankly, okay? The one year plus HODL wave is at a new all-time high or just below its new all-time high, rapidly approaching 70% of the supply that has not moved in at least a year. And in the short term, 88.5% of the total Bitcoin supply has not moved in the last three months. This is super bullish. No one is selling their Bitcoin without having much, much, much higher prices to coerce people to pay per hands their Bitcoin. Incredibly bullish indeed. Over in the traditional finance, okay, we've been saying for months that the Fed was likely done hiking rates, and now it finally seems like others are starting to agree. You can see looking out to December's meeting, December's FOMC, we're already north of 90% probability that we're going to see a pause there. And by hopping into January, we're already close to 85% probability that we are going to see a pause in January's meeting as well. So the market seems to have finally figured out the Fed is done hiking rates, but what does this mean exactly? Well, looking at the past 10 final hikes, the S&P 500 was up a year later, eight times out of 10, and it was up 14.3% on average. Pause your screen and take a good look at this if you're interested. We also saw a very, very rare indicator, the Zwig breadth thrust. This very rare signal simply shows a move from highly oversold conditions to highly overbought in less than two weeks. And all you need to know is since World War II, the S&P 500 is higher a year later every single time. Okay, so 12 months out, we are higher for the S&P 500 in 100% of instances. It's also true six months out, as you can see here. And if you take a look here, you can see that this signal does not show up very often. We also last week saw the VIX fall 30% in a single week, which is the ninth largest weekly decline in history. So overall, we've been pointing at the seasonality. This is the S&P 500 seasonality, tells us to keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes into the end of the year. And this lines up quite nicely with what we're seeing in the VIX, the VIX for the last two months of the year, we are possibly looking at a seasonality play out where we see the VIX come off massively. And you can see the Russell 2K, again, seasonality up and to the right into the end of the year. And the same is true for the triple Qs, the NASDAQ proxy. Lastly, before we get into the charts, I wanted to point this out. Okay, we have been covering, haven't we, for a while, the euro dollar looking to break out. I was saying on this channel over and over again, we needed to see the euro dollar bid because the euro makes up around 57% of the dollar basket. So if we wanted to see that dollar come off and risk to come on into the end of the year, we would need to see the euro dollar bid so that it could pressure the dollar in the dollar basket to roll over. Well, in addition to this, we're also seeing this out of the pound, okay? The GBP USD 
has also, if I draw a rough line for you, you see what I mean, has also completed this same pattern, right? This breakout right here. It's also come out of a cycle low. And since a bunch of you have been asking me, where can you go to get more cycle information? I'm afraid there's not a great deal of people out there that use cycles. I think this is one of the reasons why they provide such powerful alpha, but I can recommend this guy for sure. And whilst I tend to only use these cycles in the likes of Bitcoin, the S&P and gold, Bob Lucas, I think, uses them on those three markets plus oil and the dollar. But this gent right here charts cycles on literally dozens of markets. So go and give this guy a follow. I'm sure you'll be able to benefit greatly from the alpha that he provides. But as I said, going back to this euro dollar, euro dollar breaking out and the GBP against the dollar, as you can see right here, breaking out, looking to continue to pressure the dollar basket. So all of this points, doesn't it, to a much lower dollar over the coming next couple of months say into the end of the year which of course should align nicely with the seasonality for the stocks and the VIX as I've shown you. So overall it's looking like things are gearing up to once again harm the most amount of market participants which of course this time are the bears as we put in what looks to be quite possibly a face melting rally into the end of the year across all risk assets. So with that said logical bounce right here for the yields but I expect these to roll over since we know they're done hiking. Bitcoin's still doing Bitcoin things, isn't it? This vertical accumulation. Keep in mind, a half cycle low is due around the 15th, but there's nothing to say that it has to be any more than this, right? I would logically expect it to sweep that low from back here, but it doesn't have to. Overall, I think this yellow squiggle that's here already is going to turn out to be correct. XRP just caught my eye at 70 cents, so that's pretty cool. Long and strong continue to push. I would expect to see some level of resistance or rejection at this trend line, so... If you're holding XRP for a trade, then perhaps that is a level to focus on back here. And of course, the reason I say that is because it goes all the way back to this right here. So anyway, logical expected resistance or at least reaction in this neighborhood, but break out of there and it's probably party time for XRP, right? Obviously, as I said at the start of the video, not much has changed since the weekend, but I am looking at gold to roll over. I often talk about this when we get to a cycle low. I say the two drives pattern, okay? Something like this, where we come down, counter trend bounce, undercut that low, form that and make a swing and count this as the cycle low. That's what I'm looking for in gold. And in gold, I would say we maybe already have that first drive, counter trend bounce, looking for that rollover and undercut into that cycle low. And out of there, we could look to potentially get long because there's a nice thesis for invalidation, isn't it? Wherever this cycle low forms, we don't want to see price take out that low or that sets us up for continued downside. So looking for gold to make a cycle low and turn around. And then it's a case of do we go up or do we roll over again for gold? Silver's probably going to follow it, isn't it? I did notice the miners showing a bit more strength here and the junior miners looking fantastic, right? This is undeniably a great looking chart for the junior miners. So the big one is above, isn't it? On both cases is the seniors. If I zoom out a bit, there's the big one above. So we got a little play in here potentially. I'm not really interested, but get above these big macro ones. And I think it will be party time for the miners. My intuition here tells me that we probably, it's not, it's not, now is not the time for gold or the miners. I think probably we've got to let the risk assets run, the stock market and crypto blow off into the end of the year and possibly into Q1 of next year. And whilst we do that, we'll probably get one more rollover or sideways basing out of the miners and silver and gold. And then as everything comes tumbling down, including gold and silver, then there will be the opportunity of a lifetime to load up somewhere in this neighborhood. So that's kind of my expectation. Of course, if the market proves me wrong and breaks out of here, then it's party time already and we'll be getting long across the board. But for me, I kind of expect, I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? If we really are going to run the all-time highs in the stocks, why does gold and silver and all that need to break out as well? So anyway, one day at a time as always. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found value here. Welcome to the week. Hope you're doing well in life. And in the meantime, take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.